all right so let's look at the topics that you'll learn so the intention here is to learn html in one hour so we'll try to cover all the important html tags that is basically commonly used to build web pages okay so we'll start off with introduction we'll understand what is html what is the full form of it and what is the purpose of it then we'll move on to tag element and attribute we'll try to understand its definition right what is a tag what is an element what is an attribute so we'll try to understand how the html language is spoken we'll try to understand its lingo try to speak in terms of html then you will understand how to set up your system what software is required to write html pages and where do you execute them then you will understand what are the important components of an html page which will helpful to see which one you should include which one you can exclude right you will understand how to write headings how to write paragraph comments line and line breaks then you will understand how to write text formatting how to format your text with colors and also the font sizes then we will look at how to work with pre and code tags you will understand how to write list like bullets and also ordered and unordered list you will understand how to create hyperlinks you will look with tables create different type of tables look at different settings of the tables as well you will understand how to embed contents how to embed an image you know how to embed any object like audio or video onto the web pages you will look at forms how to create a form like a contact form or a sign up form register form login form you will understand how the form basically you write in html and how to create those form fields with the html we'll do one project and this project is about preparing a newspaper article what we'll do we'll head over to huffpost.com we'll take one article and we'll create exactly one article with what all the tags that we have learned we'll not use anything extra whatever tags you learn here we will use the same tags and then we'll create an article exactly like huffpost.com okay that is a project we'll do by showing that how this tags can be used in real time to building a website all right so these are the topics are you excited so let's jump in welcome to html basics so let's understand what is html so html stands for hypertext markup language so what is hypertext hypertext is basically all the images videos text and all those data that is been transferred over the web is called as hypertext okay and what is a markup language well markup is a language using which you mark the contents you mark the purpose of that content using the markup language so we'll understand how the html is written and what markups are there in the html okay but for the full form of the html html stands for hypertext markup language so in order to mark your hypertext you use the markup language so let's understand what is the purpose of html well html is used to describe the structure of the web page so if you look at the websites all the structure like you have an heading you have a paragraph you have subheadings then you have a footer then you have a header all the structures is been defined using html okay so the purpose of html when you write html is basically you are describing the structure of the web page and html is used to describe how the content should be displayed on the web browser so when you're developing a website html will give you some tags using which you can describe how those contents should be displayed onto the web page so that's the purpose of the html well we have met these two gentlemen jim from usa and bob in australia in the web basic section if you haven't covered that web basic section and jump directly to html section then what we covered in that web basics we talked about jim staying in usa and he's a buyer and is thinking to buy a phone for a cheaper price bob in australia he want to sell a phone for a cheaper price and he want to sell a phone right so jim being the buyer and bob being the seller they want to exchange information so we discussed about all those things in the web basics so if you want to understand more about what we discussed you can go back to web basics topic so let's understand how when information can be exchanged between jim and the bob and how html basically help us to do that so in that context we will understand what is the purpose of the html and what role does it play okay so we have discussed about client side and the server side this let's do a quick review client side is basically jim opening up a browser and typing bob.com then the request is sent to the bob.com to fetch the data bob.com receives that request send the response with the data to the browser right and one who is initiating the request is called as requester and one who is responding the request is called as provider and provider basically is called as server side which actually have all the hypertext which has the images video music files and text everything is available at the server side and from the client side you initiate the request to fetch those details from the server let's understand what is the purpose of the html what is that 
job that HTML does in the client server technology. So imagine a situation wherein browser is trying to send a request and server is sending the response. The first thing that happens is Bob will type a URL, right? It will type saying that page.html is what I want from the Bob.com. And this request is sent to Bob.com. The Bob.com basically have a HTML page. Okay. This is where you will write your HTML page and call it as a page.html. That is the extension of the HTML page. And in this page, you will link all the resources on the server. Okay. And once this page is written and it linked to all its resources, that page is sent back from the server to the client. And what is written inside the HTML page? The HTML page is basically connecting all the resources on the system and it is displaying the data onto the browser. Okay. HTML is used to describe the content on the browser. Remember the definition of HTML. So if you want to show any of the hypertext content sitting inside the server, you write an HTML page and you link all those resources in the HTML page and then anybody request for that HTML page, that HTML page is sent back as a response to the browser and browser has the capability to display that HTML code into the browser. Okay, so when we write and run an HTML page, we'll try to understand how the content has been displayed onto the web browser. Okay, but from here you have to understand the purpose of the HTML is to embed all the resources from the server and second purpose is to display the content onto the web browser. So in short, the main purpose of HTML is to embed the resource on the server. The resources could be video, image, text, data, anything that is sitting on the server you want to display that onto the client machine, onto the browser. When you create something called as HTML page and you write HTML code in it and that code can be used to display the content from the server onto the client machine. Well, HTML uses something called as markup language and you can use the markup language to mark the content on the page. For an example, you want to display an image, you mark that image as an image into using the markup language and you say, Oh, here I want to display an image. If you want to display a video from a server, you basically mark that up into the HTML page. Say, oh, at this point, you should be displaying a video. Okay. So all the things that you're doing in HTML is basically you're trying to mark up the content on the page. Okay. That's all you're doing in the HTML page. And how the markup looks like? Let me show you an example. So this is a markup. If you want to display a paragraph, right, you want to write a paragraph of text you mark it up with something called as markup. A markup looks like you have a less than symbol, greater than symbol. Then you have a tag name. That's basically the name of the markup. Then there's a starting point and an ending point. The starting point will have less than and greater than and then the name of the tag and the ending tag will have the forward slash. That's nothing but the slash. Okay. So this is a starting point. This is an ending point and anything inside is you are marking it up. You are marking up and saying this is a paragraph. Okay. Instead of that, you can even mark up an image. You can mark up a video. You can mark up an heading and then say this is basically a heading. Well, this is the instruction that is given in the HTML file. So when the web browser reads this instruction, it knows how it need to print those data onto the web browser. So HTML is really marking up the content and telling the browser, how do you display this data onto the browser? So let's take an example. On the right hand side, on the server, you have these files like page.html, dog1.jpg and dog.mpg. You have a video, you have an image and then you have a HTML file. So all the things that you do in HTML code is you will write markup language. You will mark all the contents onto the server. Okay. If you want to display an image, you will use an image tag. If you want to display a video, you will use a video tag. So you're basically telling the browser Okay, this is the image and the path is here, please print it. This is the video, the path is here, please print it. So that's the job of an HTML. You are marking up the contents and those contents are sitting somewhere in the server. Okay, it is embedding all the resources in the internet. If you want to link pages like one page to another, again in HTML code, you will say, okay, now when someone click this, please go there. Well, that's the power of the HTML. Okay, and when HTML is displayed in the browser, it reads all this HTML code and it say, oh, now you're asking me to print an heading. So I will increase the font and make it more bigger so that anybody can see the heading. And then it says, okay, you want me to display an image. Let me display an image. And where is the resource? 
the resource is going back to the server and say the file is somewhere here. Then you want to display a video, then the, again the path to the video has been given. Okay, then you see there is a footer and then there is basically some paragraphs in it. So try to realize this that HTML code is a markup language. You are marking up the content and describing the structure of the web page. And where do you display the HTML page? You display the HTML page on the browser. And browser understands the HTML code and try to display the markup language that has been written to display the content on the web browser. What are the markup language? How they should write it? This is what we'll learn in this section. All right, so let's do a quick summary of what is HTML. HTML is a markup language. You use markup to mark the content on the web page. Markups are used in the HTML page to mark the contents. HTML is used to describe how the content should be displayed on the browser. That's the purpose of the HTML. It is an instruction to the browser to say display the content like this. That's all is HTML all about. One of the most powerful thing about HTML that HTML page helps to link all the resources on the server. So if you have to connect all the files around the internet, you can do it via the HTML. HTML has that power that it can connect any resources sitting under any server which is publicly available to access. You can mark those things inside the HTML. Okay, it's really connecting things together in the internet. That's the power of HTML. And how does all these things happen? The client browser sends the request to access that HTML page. Remember, HTML page is sitting at the server, right? And someone has to initiate that request. So client browser send the request to access that HTML page. Then server sends that HTML page to the client browser. Then the client browser understand that markup and display that content onto the web browser. Okay, that's how the whole HTML scenario works. And that's how all the resources on the server is accessed by the client via using this client server technology. Okay, and understand what is HTML? HTML is a markup language which is used to describe the content onto the web browser. Well, that's all about what is HTML. Let's build some HTML pages and understand in detail. Hello and welcome to the lecture. Let's understand what is tag, element and attribute. Let's understand what are these words called as tag, element and attribute. Okay, tags look something like this. You have a less than symbol. Then you have the name of the tag. Then you have greater than symbol. Then you have a closing tag which is called as less than forward slash and same name that you used it here. Okay, and then you have some content inside it. So the starting tag is called a starting tag. You can say starting tag, right? And the ending tag is nothing but the ending tag. The one that is end with a slash forward slash is called as ending tag. You can also call it a starting tag as an opening tag. And obviously ending tag can be called as closing tag. So that's basically the definition of tag. So when someone say tag, you should think of opening tag or a closing tag or starting tag or an ending tag. Let's look at what is element. The whole thing from starting tag till the ending tag, including the content is called as element. Okay. So when somebody says element, they are referring to starting tag, ending tag and the text as well. Okay. An example of an element could be a paragraph tag where it is denoted with P less than P and greater than. Then you have text inside it. Then you have less than forward slash P and greater than. So everything in starting tag and the ending tag and the text is called as element. So how do you read this? You say this is a paragraph element and you can write text inside this tag. Okay. You can switch over between tag and an element. So you can even say starting tag and the ending tag and then you can even say it's an element. Okay. So that's basically the difference between tag and an element. Okay. Element is the complete thing tag is just the opening tag and the closing tag okay let's look at what is empty tag when you don't have a data from a starting and a closing then you call it as an empty tag empty tag is also called as self closing tag you also have tags where you don't have to mention content if you see this example less than tag forward slash and greater than you don't have a starting tag you only have the ending tag and here you have starting tag and an ending tag, but you don't have a data inside it. These two examples are called as empty element, which means you don't have a data in it. 
if you want to add a new line that is denoted with br element and it is denoted like less than br forward slash and greater than you don't mention any data in it and it is called as an empty element okay so that's how you basically read an empty element let's understand what is an attribute every element or every tag that you have can have additional properties Ta attributes can also be called as properties properties means additional information about that element if you have a tag and you want to mention some additional properties of that tag you can give a name is equal to open quotes value and the closing quotes okay you can mention the name and the value defined in the specification you cannot write whatever you want you have to follow the specification of html and use them okay an example if you are writing a link or an hyperlink you have to mention where when someone clicks this text where that data has to go what is the url location and what is the text that should be displayed on the browser so visitors is displayed and this will be linked when someone click the visitors they have to go to this location so in this whole element href is nothing but an attribute okay take one more example i'm just using an example as a dog but dog is not a tag in html but i'm just giving an example to understand the concept of attribute and if a dog element has something called as color attribute and color value is brown and the value of that dog is german shepherd how you are reading and understanding this dog element has a color attribute and color is the attribute of the dog element that's how you basically read it okay you i'm trying to tell you how do you read this attributes okay so dog element has a color attribute and then a href is basically an attribute of anchor tag a tag is also called as anchor tag okay and you can also say color is the attribute of dog element so okay this is how you read an attribute so let's do a quick summary of what we have learned so this is the perfect example again name is not an html tag i'm just giving you a definition of tag element and attribute so name here is basically called as opening tag the name here is called as closing tag an attribute is called as class and that class has some value and the name is basically saying some person name and from starting tag to ending tag or opening tag to closing tag is called as element here you are trying to define a real time example you are trying to define a name a person name as john smith and also you are adding some properties to it and you are saying john smith is in second class okay so if you have to define this you write something like this so you open and close with the opening and the closing tag you define some attributes to tell more about that person element is nothing but the opening and the closing tag okay so this is the definition of tag element and attribute okay so when we read and write about html we will be using this language i'll be saying tag i'll be saying element i'll be using paragraph element header element you know h1 tag or you know i'll be saying the attribute of this h1 tag could be this so don't get confused try to understand this language this is a new language you're learning and try to use these words when you try to define html okay so that's all in this lecture of tag element and attribute and i'll see you in the next one Hello and welcome to the lecture on checking your software. So let me walk you through what softwares you need to write this HTML and CSS and building websites with them. First, you need the browser. Okay. So there are three types of browser. One is from Google, right? And uh, it is called as Chrome. You can download Google Chrome, google.com/chrome, and then you can execute the HTML and CSS using the chrome browser there is nothing else from the google and this is how the icon of a google chrome looks like the next browser is called as firefox okay remember there is this icon for firefox you can even use firefox browser to view the html and css code okay the third browser you can use is from microsoft themselves microsoft edge is one more famous browser that can be used to execute your html and css code so here are the three famous browser right you can choose to have any one of them and i prefer to have google chrome and this is what we'll be using in this course as well so i recommend you try to use google chrome but it's up to you if you are comfortable using firefox you can use firefox if you're comfortable using ie so the decision is yours whichever you're comfortable using the browser to view the html and css code you can go ahead and install them or if it's already available on your machine then you can start using them as well so those are the three different browsers that you need to execute the code 
okay so coming back to the editors and the ide well for this course we will use brackets editor and this editor can be used to write html css and javascript one good feature about this editor is you have this live preview so whatever you write here you don't have to go to the page and execute it there's a button here and when you click on it it will basically show the output and whatever changes you are doing you don't have to refresh the page it's automatically been updated so this is the editor we will be using in this course but again it's up to you there are many other editors available in the market you can go ahead and use them so let me show you some of the id and some of the editors that is available to write php code first thing you can go to brackets.io and then download the bracket software that's what we'll be using in this course so we'll be using google chrome and also we will be using brackets brackets is to write the html and css code google is to execute them okay so there's one more editor called as notepad plus plus it's a very simple like notepad you can even use this to write the html and css code then there's one more editor called as visual studio code this very famous editor and it has this automatic completion as well very simple and very easy to use editor for web programming the next choice you have is called as atom atom again a famous editor that can be used to write html and css and javascript and many other things as well so choice is yours you want to choose notepad plus plus you know visual studio code or atom or you have sublime text okay sublime text so you can even use this editor and for the ide right there's a paid version called as php storm well i typically use php storm for my projects when i want to build an application web application and php is my server side coding so i typically tend to use php storm in this editor you can even write html css javascript and many other stuff right this is basically an ide and there's one more free ide that you can use is eclipse right all these links i'll give you so they can go ahead and look at it so eclipse is again one more famous ide tool that you can use for web programming Apart from Eclipse, there is one more IDE called as NetBeans. Let's do a quick recap on what softwares do you need. Well, you need any of this one browser. Okay, you don't install all the three. You need any one. So it's up to you. Pick one. You can pick Google Chrome. You can pick the Google Chrome, right? You can pick Firefox. This is Firefox. Or you can choose the Microsoft Edge. Any one. Okay, pick any one. Then in terms of editor, you can have brackets. That's what we'll be using. And then we have other options as well we have a notepad we have visual studio code we have atom sublime then ide where we have a php storm then eclipse ide and netbean ide all right so one thing to note is php storm is a paid version and rest of the other are free to use all right so make sure you have the ide and also browser any one of them installed so that in the next part of the course you know how to write the program and execute them so make sure you install them before you start the course hello and welcome to the lecture let's look at structure of an html page so let's create a simple html page and understand how the structure of an html page looks like for that you have to open the bracket software then we'll create a folder you can go to any location you want on your pc or mac create a folder i'll call it php training And I'm going to call introduction to HTML. Inside this, I'm going to create a folder called as structure of HTML. Okay. So in this, we will create the HTML file. So how to create an HTML file? The HTML file extension will be .htm or .html. So for this, you can first we'll create the parts of HTML and understand what is the tags that we have to write inside HTML. And we'll rename it as parts.html. To open this, you can open your brackets. You can drag and drop. That's one way to do it. Or you can open this folder. You can copy this folder. You can say open folder. Right and all the files and that you created here will be visible okay you can even go one level up open folder so once you do that you basically get all the folders here so it's easy to look at the files and the folders okay it's so up to you how you want to do it but we will open this folder introduction to html so that we can see all the folders that we create here 
and all the files that is inside that folder all right so let's define the parts of an html the first thing that you write in html is the doc type this is your defining your page as an html and html actually have a specification so you are specifying that i'm going to follow this specification in an html format okay so that's basically your document type okay and everything all the tags that you define is already predefined in html so when a browser reads this html file it know what specification to use to render this output okay that's where the doc type comes in doc type doc type is telling this document is basically an html type so when a browser renders this it understands as an html and renders means display it as an html format okay so the first tag always in an html page should be doc type and everything that you write inside an html should be under the html tags okay you should not write anything outside here or anything outside here okay remember that everything should be written inside html opening and the closing tags okay so there are two important parts of an html one is the head section and one is the body section okay the two parts here head section is basically the information about your page this is the information about your page okay this is the displaying the content on the web browser so anything that you want to display on the web page or the web browser you write it under the body anything you want to mention about this page like metadata like your title and everything you want to mention about your page you define under head so whatever you define under head is not visible everything that you define inside the body is basically visible on the page okay so remember this structure this is a structure of an html first thing you mention is a doc type to tell the browser who is rendering this html that this is an document type of html specification means you have to render this in html then you start off with html and end with an html you, just, you see every opening tag has a closing tag okay and then the main important parts of an html is head and body in head section whatever you define will not be displayed on the browser whatever you want to display on the browser you write inside the body okay so this is how the structure or parts of an html looks like so let's write some content here and understand how to write an html page so i'm going to create one more page structure.html let's open you don't have to open this up i think it will be already visible here structure.html okay you can copy paste this and then we'll start over from there okay and remember you don't write anything outside you have to mention everything inside the tag okay because i wrote it like that just to show you an example the most important thing in the head section is basically mentioning about your page so there is a tag called meta tag using which you can say what is your character set means you are talking about what character set this html is using and obviously if you are using utf8 you can mention about utf8 and the beauty about meta tag is there is only opening tag and there is no closing tag for meta tags okay that has special meaning it is describing the char set of your html page and it is mentioned in the head section okay the next section is basically your title okay title is displayed on the browser right i'm going to see when you run this you will see you can say this has a page title okay you see how i'm writing i'm writing the tag opening tag and the closing tag and i'm writing inside the opening and the closing tag okay that's basically our head section head over to the body so whatever you write inside the body is displayed on the content of the browser okay and there are some tags called h1 which we will learn in the next section is called heading you can say heading here then you're going to write the paragraph here and you're going to say this is a paragraph okay it's not we haven't covered what is heading and paragraph as of now but look at the structure of the html this is how the structure of an html looks like okay so how to run this how to see an output there's a button here which says live preview just click on this live preview button say okay 
and the Chrome browser will be used to display the live preview of what you're writing it here. Okay, I'm going to minimize it in such a way you can see the output. All right. So whatever you're writing it here will always always visible onto your browser. Okay, and it's a live preview means if you change something here. This is a live. You see, it's visible onto the browser as a live preview. You don't have to refresh. You don't have to do. That's the beauty of using the brackets editor. It gives you this live preview where, and it will tell you what you're trying to change. So if you, if I click on heading, you see heading is selected. If I click on paragraph, the paragraph is selected. So you know which tag you're changing. And this is basically the structure of the HTML looks like. And whatever you write under head tag is not actually displayed. The title is not displayed, but the title is displayed onto the browser, not on the content area. Anything that you want to display on the content area, you write under body. Anything you want to describe about this page, you write under head. Okay. So this is how the structure of an HTML looks like and make sure everything is written under the HTML. Don't write anything outside here and don't write anything outside here. Okay. Remember your HTML should be in this format having HTML head body. There are the three main important parts of an HTML. Okay. So that's about the structure of the HTML. So let's start understanding all the tags of an HTML and start building our website. Hello and welcome to the lecture on headings. So let's understand how to write headings in HTML. So this is our first tag in HTML that we'll be using on displaying the content. So let's create a folder called headings. Okay. And let's create a file called headings.html. Okay. And let's open that file as well. You can find it in headings. Okay. And we will use our boilerplate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this up, go to headings and I'm going to paste. And this is the step I'm going to do for every HTML file because that is the real purpose of having a boilerplate then I'm going to say headings you can change the title to headings okay we will remove the p tag because we're not going to learn about p tag here we're going to learn about headings okay headings if you just do a live preview of it I'm going to close this browser if you look at the live preview of h1 tag that we have been seeing so far you see you observe the font the first thing that you observe is the font and the size of your wordings okay size of that font that is it two things that you have to observe and anything that you write after the h1 tag you see how it goes to a new line okay there are six heading tags h1 to h6 2 3 4 5 and 6 similarly we'll change this also right so we have six headings, let's say heading one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. And you have to observe the font size. Okay. Observe the font size, observe the styling of that heading tags and observe the new lines. There is a new line after every heading, but you see, we haven't mentioned anything about size. We haven't mentioned everything about the color. We haven't even mentioned anything about it should be in the new line. Okay. And the new line is not because you are putting it in a new line. Okay. Let's try to do this experiment and see. All right. Let's remove all the new lines. Okay. Even though you remove the new line still appears. That's basically Google browser has its own style sheet is has its own specification of how to display the HTML tags. If you want to change those specification, then you basically write something called as CSS, which you will learn in the next section to change the behavior of how the HTML tag should be displayed on the browser. But for now, you have to observe how the heading happens. A couple of things when you write headings, you should understand that heading will insert a new line and headings are of different size and shape. Okay. And why we write headings? Okay, what is the purpose of writing headings? Typically in a page, you only have one or two headings. Typically you have one heading and then you have two or three subheadings that is basically heading two. 
and depending on your blog if you have more headings you can go ahead and write heading 2s and heading 3 is basically the subtitle of this heading okay typically 4 and 5 you you know hardly you will go to that level where you have the heading subtitle sub subtitle and then you want to emphasize something you don't really write it as a heading so think of heading as a table of content right when you write a table of content till what level you want to go you have your parent heading then you have subtitle and then whatever the subtitle inside that title okay so that's basically the purpose of heading tags and it's recommended that you have one heading tag and couple of heading two tags and then you can also choose to have heading three and four okay you will hardly reach heading five and six in most of the html pages but you will be enough to write your headings with h1 to h4 okay but still up to you how to want to use it but the purpose of writing heading is really to write headings for any content for blog post for the blog post you can write heading like what is html that is the h1 tag then you can describe the structure of the html parts of the html you know the purpose of doc type and all those things you can define inside your subheadings okay so that's how you play around with headings headings are really writing headings for a specific topic okay so remember there are six headings h1 to x6 depending on h1 is the biggest h6 is the smallest okay so that's all about headings and i'll see in the next one hello and welcome to the lecture on paragraph and comments so we'll learn two more tags here we'll learn how to write paragraphs we'll learn how to write comments in html okay so go to introduction to html let's create another folder paragraphs and comments okay and we'll create a file we'll write both paragraph and comments in one file change it to dot html and then we'll use bracket to open it up okay so let's open this up remember the boilerplate we copy the boilerplate we paste it here we change our description to paragraph and comments all right so first we will learn how to write comments in html comments are comments that is not displayed on the browser so how do you write it you write less than symbol exclamatory mark dash dash then dash dash greater than symbol so whatever you write inside this right is everything is a comment this is a comment okay and this will not be printed as an output but this text is visible on the browser okay and what i mean i'll show you that so if you look at this comment you cannot see the comment here so if you press right click and say view page source then you can see the comment of written in the html but obviously you cannot see that comment on your web page all right and this is the only comment that is available in html typically when you say comment comments are single line comments multi-line comments but everything that you write is a comment is using this this is single line comment and to convert this single line to multi-line all you have to do is press enter that's all because there is only just one comment in html there are no single line no multi line everything start with less than exclamatory mark and then dash dash and dash dash and greater than symbol and remember this is not displayed onto the output so you are free to write whatever you want to write as a documentation for learning purpose you can start writing comments okay and don't make this one mistake okay when you write a comment don't add a space here once you start adding space after the less than symbol it will be visible onto the output right because that is not a comment okay make sure the spaces are after you have added the dash dash okay so now after you have dash dash you can add n number of space and it will be fine it will not be able to display the output all right so understand how the comments are written in html page because it's very important if you want to comment any of the code let's say this code i want to comment it out i'm gonna just say dash dash 
and I'm gonna say dash dash and greater than symbol okay and if you look at the output all the contents are gone because this is commented okay so let's understand how to write a paragraph so for that I'm gonna use an h1 tag you can see what I'm typing it here we'll see real time as well all right so let's create a news so we'll say today's news okay we have the heading there and I want to type some paragraph I want to say start of an article you see how it is appearing here as well so you know how you should write your HTML page okay and I want to paste some content here typically when you want to paste content you tend to do this right there's a better way to write all those garbage there this is called as lorem ipsum okay if you're hearing lorem ipsum for the first time this is a like a garbage content you can paste it anywhere you want right i'm gonna copy this up okay it's a dummy content right no specific meaning to it okay and it's famous in the web many of the websites use this to fill up their page okay so i'm also gonna give you the link here if you want to add a link where you got the source from typically you can do that via this and you can add the link here right okay you can see the start of an article here now i want to end my article so i'm gonna add one more paragraph to it and say end of article okay I can even say start of another article and end of another article right so if you observe properly every paragraph is a new line here okay even though the paragraphs are not written in a new line here so by default the browsers are adding new line for your paragraphs okay like heading like heading has a new line even paragraph has a new line okay so you have to be careful when you deal with paragraphs and if you really want a new line then you go ahead and add paragraphs to it let's say you want to add a paragraph maybe after 1500 what you can do simply say end of the paragraph start of the paragraph and that's all you get a new line here paragraph are really paragraph when you want to write text on a browser you write it in a paragraph and typically a most useful use cases of writing paragraphs are writing blogs if you're writing blogs you want to display content and you want to display headings and content heading will be handled by h1 to h6 tags the paragraph will handle all your text right and sometimes you want to say okay i don't want to have my start of article in paragraph maybe you choose to have h2 here okay so this is how you play around with having h1 and h2 and paragraph if you want to have different size of your title you can deal with h1 to h6 and for all the text that you want to write as a paragraph you define it under p tag okay so here is how your html file looks like let's open our actual file double click this okay this is how your html file will look like okay and you can see this is our heading tag h1 tag this is your h2 tag and this is your paragraph tags then you have h2 tag then all these are paragraph tags to see the source code right click on it pay view page source and you should be able to see the source code and if you see the source code from here from the brackets you will see some of the brackets tags added here okay so don't go and open up this up and view your code make sure you open your file via a browser and then you press ctrl u or right click or say view page source well that's all on this lecture on writing paragraph and comments in html and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome to the lecture on understanding horizontal lines and new lines okay if you go to introduction to html we'll create a new folder and we will write it as horizontal lines and line breaks okay and we'll create a file here so instead of that i want you to start with the file okay so i'm gonna copy paste the file here but if you open up the material folder you should be able to find this file okay so start with this file what i want to do is remove this start here 
and remove this copy okay and let's open up in the brackets okay to this page we will add line breaks that's basically the horizontal lines and we will add the breaks into it so open up this go to this folder horizontal lines open up this file so i'm going to close all the other files okay so let's look at this output first how it looks like okay so you have your h1 tag obviously you have your h1 tag then you have some h2 tags for main news news 1 and news 2 then you have your footer and then you have some paragraphs in it okay but what you want to do is you want to add some lines here to segregate the sections and also you want to add some breaks here you don't want the text to go run all the way to the right but you want to have it in a nice paragraph okay so that's what we're going to learn in this lecture so to this same page horizontal and lines break let's add a line okay so let's do a preview here okay and the horizontal line tag is hr it's a self-closing tag you don't have to end anything you can just write hr and you will see a horizontal line appearing here similarly we can add after the news is completed we want to write one more hr you can see it's nicely formulated again before the footer or after the main news is completed you want to add one more horizontal line okay now the html page looks much neater now you have different sections of it you have the horizontal lines to segregate the section that's basically the hr will add these lines then now you want to break the content so that it looks nicer into a paragraph for that there is a tag called br it's again a self closing tag and you can add that when the text is been ending okay you can add like this even the self closing you can choose to have slash or you can choose not to have slash okay you can add one tag here and one tag here okay and similarly for all the rest of it you will try to add the same tags and you see on the right hand side that's where the break is coming up you see 1500 here i'm gonna add the break here and you see it's breaking now so break is basically breaking up the line breaking up the text and moving into the next line okay that's what the break does but if you try to add new lines like this okay it's not going to add new lines onto the output okay though if you want to add a break you have to use a tag everything in html is a markup language so you have to mark this up to say this is a new line if you want to add two lines okay you can do it via breaks okay you see it's breaking up here right so the way you add breaks the new lines is via this br tag if you want to add the horizontal lines you do it via the hr tag and remember all the white spaces new lines is being ignored by html it doesn't care how many lines you write in html page it doesn't consider it as a new line okay you have to mention that via and markup only when you say as a markup then the browser will read it as a new line and add a new line if you're not going to do that then it's not going to understand that okay so now if you open up the page you can see it's nicely formatted now okay let's close this up and open our actual file okay and open up in a full view mode okay now you can see the new lines is properly added and then you have an horizontal line just to segregate the section now the page looks much neater and then you are able to identify different news into sections via the horizontal lines all right so that's how you write an hr tag to horizontal lines br tag for breaks and remember these are self-closing tag you can choose to have slash or you can choose not to have slash these are empty elements or self-closing tags and remember the new lines you even if you add new lines into the html page it won't render in the output you need to specify it via the markup language okay so that's all about horizontal lines and the line breaks and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome to the lecture on understanding strong emphasis underline and italics so we'll understand 
how to apply these styles into your web page so go to your introduction to html folders right click and we'll create one more folder called as draw okay so i'm going to give you a startup file a reference file which you can find in the material folder and you can start from there so this file so this is a file that you can find in the material folder all you can do is you can copy this up remove the start here okay and we'll start using in the brackets now okay let's close all other files okay to this we will apply the styles okay typically there are many styles available you can apply and styling is actually applied via the css but still html gives you some simple tags to apply the styles to your text okay and these styles are called as one is strong the tag is strong okay they are not self closing tags but i'm just trying to define them here okay this is to bold the text okay then next is italics this is to italics the text then you have underline for underline you have u tag then you have emphasis if you want to emphasize like a quote you can use it emphasis all right so let's use this tags now okay for that i want to emphasize i want to put a strong around my lorem ipsum okay so i'm going to do that i'm going to say strong so strong opening and strong closing so wherever you apply strong opening and closing that becomes bold right you know bold right if you use microsoft word you should have known what bold means this is like you are adding bold underlying italics and playing around with the text okay and these tags mostly are used inside the paragraphs so all the formatting of the text is done via these tags so let's do a live preview of it okay so you see the strong has been applied okay and you can see it's in the bold now okay the bold only happened just now for heading tags now to apply bold onto the text you use a tag called strong okay and you want to underline something let's go on top and you want to underline printing and typer text so you say underline so printing and type setting industry is underlined okay if you see it here it's underlined now okay and you want to add a break here obviously the break has already been applied and if you go down you want to play around with this you go down you want to apply strong onto this okay and also you want to have italics for it okay you can see how it becomes it became strong and italics maybe you want to write a comment for it okay you can write it in both ways you can write italics and you can say nice article and you can say worth reading and now you want to um, put a strong for the person who has wrote this comment right okay you can see here so this is basically italics and this is strong okay similarly you can play around with this and you can add emphasize okay typically emphasize is used when you want to write a quote or something you can use emphasize for it and inside the text you want to add italics use i tag okay and let's say the same thing and it's written by jane right is the same output let's refresh this okay it's the same output but understand emphasize is mostly used to you know for a quotation for writing comments and those kind of stuff 
italics is mostly when you write a text you want to italic something then you write to use i tag there okay but most of the output that you see italics and emphasize both look same okay it's just different tags are available for us to use and you can use the closing of the emphasis here right so that's your html page so let's open our html page okay it looks much beautiful now you have your heading tags you have subheadings then you have your strong that's coming up from strong let's look at that this strong is coming basically highlighting the text in bold then you have underline u tag that's underlining the text then you have italics here you have applied italics then you again you have strong here and then you have also used emphasize for it for this one okay so the page look very nice now you can go ahead and change the formatting of text using strong italics underline and emphasize okay so these are the tags that is been used to change the format of the text well that's all this lecture on formatting the text and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome to the lecture let's understand two important tags in html that is pre and code okay so we create a folder called pre code okay let's write an example to understand what is this purpose of pre and code so we must call this pre code.html all right let's open this up into the brackets close this up and we'll use our boilerplate copy paste this paste it here change the description pre and the code okay we'll remove this heading okay the two tags that we have pre and code looks like this pre code. okay so let's understand what is the purpose of it the pre tag basically is used to format the text exactly as it is written okay so let me type that is used to format text exactly as it is written okay whatever right here with spaces with new lines exactly it is printed in the output the code is to display the computer code okay could be c c plus plus java anything that is you are writing in a computer as a code like java c plus plus php javascript any code okay you use under the code tag okay these are the tags given by html and telling you if you are writing a source code please embed under the code okay so let's write a pre first okay here we understood in html previously in paragraph tag when you add new lines it's not been displayed but if you really want to have your own format that you want to display onto the output okay like this is okay what you are trying to do here is you are using a pre tag to say whatever you are writing here i want the same output on the browser okay i want browser to consider my space and the new lines and print as it is okay that's what the pre tag does if you look at the output you will see exactly the same okay even this space are included okay if you want to remove that space right you see it's moving it up here right and if you try to add that back right the any space that you add it here will be shown in the output and is exactly printed as you are writing inside it that's the purpose of having a pre tag okay what if you take this and apply a p tag here it's interesting to see that okay you will not see that output because p tag will ignore the white spaces and the new line okay that's why even though it is printed like this even though in the output you might see 
the p tag like this and then you will see the same input but the p tag doesn't consider the spaces doesn't consider the new line okay that's the specification of p tag if you want to have similar output as you wrote in the html page you have to use something called as pre tag right so let's add a new line here hr is used to add new line and we're going to close this have a preview right up here right then now let's write some code okay let's write a php code of an add function I'm going to say return a plus return b okay if you're writing any kind of code that you want to display on the output you can embed it onto the code but you see here all the new lines is being ignored think for a second how can you have the same output displayed onto the browser how can you do it think for a second well you can embed this in a pre-tag right that's the purpose of pre-tag if you have pre-tag here then you get the output as you have written it right you see you are able to print as it is so that's the purpose of having pre-tag but you want to embed any code you mention it under the code all right so that's the purpose of having pre-tag and the code tag so these two tags are very important when you deal with blogging because sometimes you want to display some spaces between the text you can use it via the pre-tag but there are some things also available in html to add the spaces okay and if you want to add source code you can always go and use code tag okay so let's open our html page okay and then we can view our output okay this is our output with the pre-tag and the code tag okay so that's all about pre and code tag and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome to the lecture on lists list is basically when you write ordered list like bullet points or you want to have a numbering points so if you want to write like a list of items then you basically call list we we'll look at what tax is available in html to write list okay for that we'll create a folder list folder and we'll call the file name as lists right let's open this file up we'll copy our boilerplate code into this we'll call it as lists call it as lists okay so let's understand how many type of list is available in html there are three types available first is called as definition list second is called as ordered list ordered list means where you have numbering one two three and then you have on order list where your list is represented with a bullet points and the tags for definition list is dl it's open and close with dl okay and inside dl you can have dt and dd that is the definition title and the definition description you have definition title and definition description that is the td for order list you write with ol ol means o stands for ordered l with list and you end with ol and all the list items that you have you write it under li okay you can write multiple li and each li will have numbering attached to it so if you have one and two li's then it will be numbered one automatically and second one as second so you can have n number of li's and similarly for unordered list you have something called as ul okay ul means unordered list okay similarly in ul also you have li and each li can represent with a bullet point basically it is unordered so you will not have numbering there instead of numbering you will have bullet points okay so let's write an example and understand how this looks like so let's start with our definition list that's our dl dt and dd okay definition list 
definition title and definition description and by the definitions of it what do you think this is used for okay this is used mostly for table of contents and dictionary items okay so let's define that you start with dl then you have dt that's in can call this is definition title then this is definition description okay and then you end your deal and after that you can add a real-time example of how it can be used well you can say learn HTML in few hours then you can describe about what is it like HTML stands for hyper text markup language okay so your deal is complete let's write a horizontal line then we'll write our order list so for that i'm going to define one more heading and i'm say ordered list and ordered list is ol and li and it is used for numbering the items like one two three an example could be a shopping list right so let's write the li items so under ol o stands for order you can have n number of li's okay and imagine you are writing a shopping list then you can write milk bread and eggs and that will be displayed with number so you'll have number one here number two here number three here similarly you can add an hr and then you can add the unordered list okay so you can add the unordered list here okay and the unordered list starts with ul it is used for bullet items bullet points and you can add a paragraph here just to say why then you can add some bullet points there create own web pages design websites and show off the skills well you can also mix and match with ol and ul so here you have to change ul because it is unordered list okay so let's write and mixed items here okay you have your order list and you are saying this is my and now inside the order list you can have unordered list you can say you will you can have li you can say c c plus plus and you can say java okay so you will when you see the output you have the ordered list and you have an ordered list okay so let's do a quick preview of how it looks like okay so let's go back to our dl and dt and dd this is our dd right so you see how the dt and dd is organized okay it know this is the title and this is the description and the formatting is automatically been taken care right and this is called as definition list which is used as dl dt and dd mostly used for table of contents and dictionary items then we talked about having the ordered list ordered list is ol and li this is used to have numbering so when you write milk bread and x you see one two three okay that's where your numbering automatically comes up so if you have the new line and a new item then the number will come automatically that's basically it is ordered it's numbered unordered is basically used for bullet points so if you see the bullet points you have the bullet points here 
create your own web page design websites is all bullet point there's no numbering because it is unordered that is from the ul and the mixed items you can see this is numbered one and then these are the unordered list and this is an ordered list okay so you can mix and match ordered and unordered list as well you can change the sequence as well you can have unordered first inside the unordered you can have the ordered list okay but remember how to write list okay let's open that file okay so this is how you write a list you have a definition list dl dt and dd you have an ordered list ol and li then you have an unordered list ul and li and you can mix and match the ordered and the unordered list okay and for ordered list you have numbering automatically coming up for unordered the bullet points will come up automatically okay so that's how you use lists in html via these tags okay so that's all for the lecture on list and i'll see you in the next one Hello and welcome to the lecture on links. Let's understand how to create links inside your web page. Links is also called as hyperlink. Links are nothing but you leave a reference of another page onto your web page. So when someone clicks that link, they go to that specific page. Okay. So let's create a link folder. Okay. So we'll start with a startup file and you can find this startup file in the material folder. So this is your startup file let's open that startup file and first review that what's inside it then we'll add some new pages and links inside it okay so let's open this file okay so the page looks like this okay there is no hyperlink in this there's just the underline here we'll add some hyperlinks in this and then we'll try to see how to navigate from one file to another file okay so what we will do we will remove the start hit start here from the file name and then we'll create two more files we'll call it about.html and contact.html okay so first let's go to home.html and add links to about and contact okay so let's look at the anchor tag and let's understand how to write the links inside your pages so let's open your home page a is a tag which is used to create hyperlink it is also called as anchor tag and it's basically used to link other pages and urls you can also use anchor tag as a reference on the same page you can create references in the same page you can you can jump onto that pages a or a tag also has attributes so when you look into attributes of a tag obviously the anchor tag need to tell you the location right when you put a link you need to say where the link will go that is basically the attribute of the anchor tag okay so the first anchor tag that will add is the links to the pages so you see the horizontal lines two horizontal lines we're going to add in between that we're going to add the ul here that is the unordered list and we're going to add three items here and inside the each of item we're going to add the links Okay, first is the about, then is the contact. Okay, but you don't have a hyperlink here. You don't have a link here. When you see this page, okay, you will have three items, but it's not clickable. You cannot click this to go to that page. Okay, we'll add the hyperlink so that the link will come. When you click about, you go to about page. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So for that, you have to add a tag called A, that is the anchor tag and you have to mention where is the location so the href is basically pointing out to the location of that file okay and the closing tag should be after the text so whatever inside this about becomes a hyperlink okay so let's quickly review that first right so let's review our page we close this pages we can open the live preview now okay and you can find that about and contact becomes link now however it's not pointing to any resource or any page because you haven't told what page it is you can say about dot html right and then you can say contact dot html so when you click about it goes to about page when you click contact it goes to the contact page okay but we haven't done anything on that page so we'll 
I even add some links back to the home page. Okay. If you go all the way down, you want to add a link to phptraining.com. And how can you add phptraining.com link? So whenever someone clicks this, the new window should open and it should open this site. Okay. For that, you will add a href tag and you will mention with the protocol phptraining.com. You close the double quotes and then you have a property called target which you will mention underscore blank okay and then you close the anchor tag after the text remember this anchor tag you have to put the text inside the anchor tag so that this text become the link okay and if you look at the page just refresh this and this will become a link right and when someone clicks this a new window open and phptraining.com will open now all right so this is how you can add a link to your page and then when someone clicks it you say underscore blank so that the target is not this page the target is a new blank page that's what you are trying to tell via the anchor tag open up a new page and open this link in that new page that's what the target underscore blank means and also you see you are scrolling top and bottom right you want to add a link somewhere on the bottom to say click to go on the top right let's add that link i want to add a link and i want to say top so i'll say back to top okay okay so the link is available so when someone clicks this it should go on to the top and you have mentioned the anchor as hash top okay so let's define that anchor as well so how do you define an anchor within the same page this is basically a reference you are putting inside your page so that when someone want to go middle of the page bottom of the page from bottom they want to go top of the page you can handle it via these anchors okay and then you don't put any text inside it because that will be visible you don't want any anchor to be visible it want to be invisible so you don't put any text inside it now you have this anchor name defined somewhere on the top right is invisible because you haven't put any text when someone clicks this let's refresh this page click this you go on to the top because you are going from this link you are saying i want to go to that anchor that anchor is defined somewhere here before the welcome and then when someone click on this top link it will go and find the anchor say top and it will go to that page level this like moving inside your page sections okay just click on it and you will go on top so let's close off the about and contact page you just have to copy these links go to about page okay in the about page you don't want to have a link for an about to so just to mention that when you are in the about page you want to have link for home and contact so you know you are in the about page right similarly when you are in the contact page you want to do the same thing right you want to remove the link for contact and you want to put for about and you want to change the file name as well so our page has been done so i'm in the home page i know there's no link so this is home page now if i go to about the about this about page you can see about.html and you can see the link is for home and contact so you can navigate now to home and about contact you click on contact you are in the contact page right now you can navigate back to about to home home to about and then you can play around with it right so this is how you basically add links to your pages and links is you can add to any resources that you have on the server or anything on the web as an example we have seen in home.html one way to link other resources on the internet is via the href tag you mention the url of it and then when someone clicks it you can open up a new window and go to that location okay if you want to refer anything inside the same page you can use anchor tags by name property give a name to it then you say href go to that name 
and you have to use the hash here so we have used href to access the pages all right so that's all about anchor tag and anchor tag remember anchor tag has attributes and anchor tag is the most important tag because it connects all the resources on the internet if you want to give links to your facebook page twitter page you want to give links to your other pages on the website you will be using anchor tag a lot okay so that's all about how to use anchor tag and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome to the lecture on creating tables so we have finished introduction to html so let's go ahead and create another folder okay let's create a folder called creating tables okay and we'll create a file called tables.html right so when we head over to the brackets we are still pointing to introduction to html so we'll change that instead of that we'll go to intermediate html and we'll select that folder okay so now you have this folder ready so we'll create all the ex exercises here and then we'll use the intermediate html folder anyway we also need the boilerplate so I'll, i'm going to open that boilerplate okay and keep it ready so let's create the tables okay i'm going to say tables okay change the heading to table so we're going to do two examples and we're going to see there are two ways to write an a table so we're going to see both the ways okay and how do you write a table first we'll say this is sample one okay there's a ta tag called table okay using table you write tables okay and in tables you have three things first you have the heading then you have the row and then you have your columns right so first thing we do is we always write rows okay the row is written with r t r right r denotes row and inside rows you have something called as td okay that's nothing but your columns okay so anything that you want to add a new row you create new rows like this and if you want to have columns then you add like this okay these are columns inside the html page for the table we have to create the heading first so let's create the heading so to create the heading there is one more element called as th that is the heading so here you will add the column names so i am say column name one and column name two okay once you add a row for that heading then you have to add another row for the data right so let's add the data now so i'm say content one that's nothing but your column okay what you're trying to do here is this is the first column this is the first content in that column and then you're gonna have second column and this is the content in the second column okay and how you're creating the new lines inside the table you're using the tr which is nothing but the rows okay so after this we're going to write a new line and then we'll let's look at an output of this table okay so here you can see you have a table that's the h1 then you have column name one that is th this again the th then you have td and then you have the td so you see the new lines here the table has new row that row is coming up from this tr okay and then td are nothing but your columns okay the columns are column one content one and content two column name one and column name two the row is basically the new line that is a new entry inside the table okay so let's create one more sample of how to create the same table so i'm going to add h1 and i'm going to say table example 2 and i have the sample 2 obviously we're going to have the table so anything that you write as a table you have to define inside the table okay you also have a tag called caption okay you can say table caption you know move it here so that you can see the output 
okay then you have something called as table heading right okay how do you create a table heading we saw that we can create a row and then th it's also called as t head okay using t head also you can create the headings and inside the t head you have to now write the row okay and you can say column name one and column name two this is your headings okay and then you can have the footer also for your table so footer we can write right after the heading okay remember that so it is t foot these are basically the html tags from the specification they say you can even use this way to create the tables okay and we can say footer right now goes your content okay now this is the table body okay you can use t body and inside the t body you can write your actual content now you can define the row and then you can define the columns okay from the previous example this example have many other elements in the table it has caption it has heading it has footer and then it has body it's up to you which one you want to use you want to have a caption head footer and basically the body but typically from my side i will typically use this because it looks simple and easier i won't have much of the time i don't have footer but if i have footer i will write outside the table right it even does the same job maybe we can do that we can not place this in h but we can remove and put the it is just the spacing problem right you have little more space when you write a paragraph but if you write a footer for your table it's right under the column right so it's up to you how you want to write it but typically i tend towards writing simple tables because it has too much things inside and simpler to read as well because you have the heading and then you have the columns okay but if you want something like a table where you have to have a caption where you want to have a heading you want to have a footer and then the you have to differentiate between the heading footer and the body then this kind of tags will help you to achieve right the same table all right so that's all about how to create tables in html so let's create a student table and then we'll understand how you can populate a real time data right so let's go ahead and click create a student table Okay. let's open that up let's use our boilerplate we can actually use the tables and we'll create this and we'll remove this section part of this exercise we'll also learn some attributes of the table okay so let's call it as student table okay the first part we will create the columns we we'll create three columns for a student id name and class okay for the content we will create the user content or student content and then his class all right we don't have to copy the heading we'll copy like two more rows right we'll call it 202 and 20103 102 and 103 and then we will change the names right we'll call him jane and then we'll keep him bob his fifth standard and his second standard right let's verify this 
so that's our table we have our heading and when we have three rows in it okay and looks nice let's add some properties to this table okay so what i'm going to show you is how do you add different kind of properties to the table and make it look nicer okay we are not doing any styling to it but these are the attributes of the tag which we will be using okay so the first thing is how to add a border okay so we'll say add a border okay how do you add a border so there's an attribute called border okay you can specify the width of it and once you save one the border will appear you can increase it by two by three by four by five right so border basically help you to see the format of your table right what is the width or that has been taken care by the text and then you can play around with it once you add spacing to it then your border will help you to see which space or which element or which column is basically taking that space okay so one of the property or attribute of a table is a border using which you can add a border okay let's create another example the next example is called as cell spacing You can add cell spacing that is the attribute and you can mention how many points it is px means points the spacing is basically spacing between the columns right if there are if you see here there are columns like id and name what is the space you want between those columns it is like one column after the column what is the space that you want for each of these columns so that's why you see the spacing is outside Okay, spacing is outside that element that is called cell spacing spacing between two different cells the next one is cell padding okay you can also have cell padding and it's called a cell and padding okay the cells padding is basically the space inside the cell okay cell spacing is outside between the two cells cell padding is the space inside the cell okay so inside the cell you see there's so much space now there's a 40 px that is the all around the text 40 px has been applied that is the 40 points has been applied that is space that has been applied to this cell you can also mention the width of the table you can say width that's another property of the table and you want to be 50 percent right you want the table width to be 50 percent so that's basically you see the first table there's no space and you see this table so there's space here right that space is coming because you specify the width next is column span let's look at column span that's one more attribute of a table column span is nothing but adding columns together let's say you want to add these two columns together you don't want to have this line okay you can do that by specifying any of the columns and say the column span means the width of the span is two points means you occupy the two columns okay and because you occupy the two columns you don't have to mention it here you can mention it here and then you can remove this column because this column is occupying the Two column space okay you just mentioned is equal to here and you can see the column is being occupied okay this is called as call span column span all right and where do you apply that you apply onto the column and if you want a column to occupy n number of columns and then you want to merge columns together you basically use the call span okay similarly you have row span let's look into that and you want to combine let me show you that output right you want to combine 102 and 103 together okay so if you want to combine 102 and 103 together you can say 102 and 103 you are clubbing the columns together right and i don't want 103 here okay I want to combine these two columns here right how are you going to do it you can say row span 
is equal to 2 okay now you can see the row has been added right here you have merged the columns here you have merged the rows okay that's is the property of a row span row span merge two rows together column span merge two columns together all right so those are the some of the attributes let's open the page and let's review it once the first thing we did is we created the student table we had our headings and then we had our columns three columns okay that's what is this then we added a border to have this nice little lines around our columns then we looked at cell spacing cell spacing is the spacing between two different cells okay then we looked at cell padding cell padding is the space inside the cell okay then we looked at the width okay you see the width 50 percent right then it takes the half page space right because you say 50 percent right then there is a call span call span is to merge the columns together okay here you can see you have merged two columns and then you have the row span row span is to merge the rows together okay so those are the properties row span call span width cells padding cell spacing border okay those are the attributes of a table okay have fun with tables play around with it and see any tables that you have you, have, you want to create try to play around with it and create the same output with tables so that's one's lecture on tables and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome to the lecture let's see how to embed contents okay so for that we'll create one folder embed contents and let's create the file called embed.html okay so i'm going to copy paste the images here and the video here so that we can embed in the html page so here are the files i have a video i have an image and i have an mp3 file okay so let's open this up and let's see how to embed the resources so I'm going to say embed contents the first thing we'll do is embed an image okay how do you embed an image inside an HTML page okay there's a tag called image IMG an image has an attribute called source to specify what is the file name so you can see the file name is doc.jpg and then you can mention the width and the height of your image okay i'm just saying the height and it's a self-closing tag you don't need text to display the image okay so this is how you basically display an image remember that image is used to img tag is used to display the image src is an attribute using which you can mention what is the file name you can even mention the file name from some site right you have some site www xyz.com slash you can mention all those details also and then it will be pull those resources from the internet and our display on your page okay so if you don't mention a path it will try to search that file inside the same local folder and try to embed that into your html page all right that's a doc image fine so we will write an horizontal line and we can also preview that and see how it's coming up okay so that's how then image is embedded onto the web page okay so let's look at how to embed a video okay so you have a video tag for this and video have width you can mention what is the width of your video and then you can mention what is the height of the video so i'm gonna say 240 and then you can mention what controls you want i want to define my own controls so now i'll define the controls and i will define the source of that file okay so for that inside the video you have a tag called source and then you have to mention what is your source so this is my source okay and what is the type of it and the type is video slash mp4 right and then if this video is unable to play you want to show some text you can say having some issues with the video
if the page is unable to load this video it will show this text all right so you can see the video is embedded here you can even play the video right you can maximize it you can even play the video right so let's look at how to embed the audio file let's look at how to add the audio so for this you have a tag called audio okay and you're saying i want to handle the controls and auto play right it will start playing automatically and then obviously you have to say what is the source of it same source tag is used then you can embed the mp3 file and this time you have to change the type to say audio slash mp3 it's not mp3 is mpeg okay then if that format is not supported okay because we say auto play start playing already right now you can say the browser does not support this audio format right when that video is unable to play with some because of some format issues this text will be shown all right so you can remove this auto play so that the auto play doesn't work okay now when you refresh the page you have your image that is coming up from image tag you have your video coming up from the video tag and the source is the file name and the type of the video then you are able to embed an audio using an audio tag and then this source is coming up from some file name okay and this text is displayed when this video or audio is unable to display onto the web page they'll display this text instead of the audio here that's how you basically embed an image video and audio so i'm going to show you an example i'm not going to type it but i'm going to show you how to embed an image and video and audio to save time i'm going to copy paste one of the article let's review this article first okay the article is very simple we have worked through how to create heading and how to create the line how to create subheadings how to create the paragraphs how to create the footer you know we learned all those things the only thing that i have done here is adding some of the things first thing i have added an image then i have added a video then also again i have added a image and then the audio okay and you see how i am able to add a image and the text right side of it so let's open the code and review what i have done here so for that we'll go to brackets open the article.html okay so let's review our page okay so the first thing is you have the heading that is the today's news right then you have section right we have created sections in it and one of the section have article and it has this heading called german shepherd then if you see the figure there's a tag called figure in article there's a tag you're seeing for the first time so inside the figure you can attach the images and for each figure you can say what is the caption for that figure so if you see this this is called as fig caption and inside the figure you have attached the image again you still have to use the image tag to include the image but you can wrap it around a tag called figure which is under the article okay like header and footer that you have you can also include the images using the figure tag and you want to add a caption to your image you can say fig caption okay and then you have your paragraph here right you have your p tag and then you have your footer here i think fancy we have done here we have learned all these things previously it's just that we have used this figure and then we have used the image tag to embed this image with some alt so alt is nothing but when the image is missing this text is displayed so if you do this and you refresh you see the german shepherd that's basically your alt okay you want to display a text when the image is not found that is coming up from the alt all right so let's move on so next we have created a table here okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you the border so that you know what is the table looks like okay so this is how the table looks like okay it's two by two co column table so in the table the first column i've left empty and the second column i've added the video and here in these two columns first column you will have an image and the second column you have the text and then you have the audio okay so let's review that so for the table you have two rows right you have two rows row one and row two the first row i have left it empty so there's an empty space and how the space is occupied is based on the space that is occupied by the biggest element so the biggest element is the image so this space will also be applied to the all the other columns as well 
then on the other column you have added the video right you have added the source so the video has been shown here then you have added a row and in that row you have then the first column you have shown the image and on the second column you have basically used something called as v align okay so v align basically you make it on top okay you can even make it bottom okay then the text will go bottom because of the width of the image the bottom is only till here okay but we want to move it on top okay we have aligning the text to the top and then you are just adding a paragraph with strong listen to these words listen to his words and then you are embedding the audio all right very simple example i think fancy here so we have removed the border and now the page looks nicer now so you have everything that you need to embed into a page you know how to embed an image you know how to embed a video you know how to embed an audio okay so that's all on this lecture on embedding contents and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome to the lecture on forms so let's create the forms and i believe you have done the music download exercise as well let's create the forms some say working with forms and i'm going to create two files here i'm going to say get form dot html okay we'll understand how form works and then we'll look at form elements okay so let's open that code let's open our boilerplate as well okay so let's say is get form okay forms as if you know forms is basically like a contact form sign up for register form login form you have these elements like text boxes check boxes radio buttons submit buttons and all those things you can create in html using something called as forms okay and that's what we're going to create in this exercise so we'll say simple form with get action we're going to see what is the action means okay and how do you create a form there's a tag called form okay and using this form tag you have to define all your elements inside the forms always remember don't define form elements outside the form tag always define the form elements inside the form tag okay how you define html inside the html similarly if you want to define form tags define inside the form tag okay that is your first rule and form basically have two important properties the first attribute is called as method and the method has a parameter called as get or post then you have an action an action is basically telling where you want to go to when someone submit this form where you want to go this file to right that's coming up from the action so we'll create results.html and then we will and someone click the button we will go to that page that how to and where to go to that page is defined by this action and going from one page to another is taken care by the form let's understand what is this method get means okay before that we'll write some fields and we'll write a submit button reset button and then we will try to see what is the method called as get okay so how to define a text box and a label for label you have label and label you can basically say for which text box you're writing this label so i'm say there's a first name and um, for the first name i'm writing this label so after that we'll define what is first name okay and this is the text i want to display now i'm saying the input input is basically the input box and you have to say what type it is okay the input type is basically text so it, the text box will appear and you have to say what is the id for it okay this id should match with the label for okay right and you want to show some text inside the text box you can use placeholder and you can say enter your first name right and then we'll give a name to it is a name like a variable name to the input box so whatever you basically entering into this will be saved in it okay then we're going to add some new lines okay 
then we are going to say last name okay and then we have to have an submit button and reset button okay how are we going to write the submit button again you can use the input and this time instead of saying text you can say it is a submit button okay and then you can also have the reset button okay and instead of showing reset you can say the text on the button as saying the clear form all right so let's look at how this form looks like okay so you have a beautiful form here so we haven't changed the type okay so type is double equal to all right so you have your first name then you have the placeholder of first name last name label then the text box of with the placeholder enter your last name then you have submit and clear form okay so once we enter this data we want to click on submit so when you submit it will go to this page results.html page okay so let's i'm going to copy paste that file so this is the results file nothing fancy in that file is just we'll have thanks for submitting the details and we'll get back to you soon okay the most important thing that you have to understand is what is this method get says okay why is you are seeing a method as a get there are two types of form actions get and post so get is basically when you submit a result let's say first and last so when you click submit right you went to the results page right but you can see the data now right these are the variable names that we have given assigned to the input tags and you can see the data here this is called as get when you say get the form fields are attached in the url okay and we can even do post there's one more type i will simply do it post all right let's open it up and just change it to post Okay. rest all remains the same i'm just changing the method so that when the data is posted it is posted not in the url so if i say first and say last and i say submit you will see it's not attached in the url so that's how basically get and post works so for the get when you enter the data and submit it basically goes into the url for the post let's go back to our post file right so for the post you can watch this in the inspect mode okay you go to network so let's click submit so once you submit you will not able to see the data but if you go to network tab and then when you click open this file you feel able to see that in the form data here let's open that up okay if you open up the form data right you should able to see the first name and the last name so it is sending in the header as the post but when you use get basically it is sending as the url okay so when it is post it is sending in the header when it is get it is sending in the url so that's basically the method called as method post and method get okay if you want to send simple text that you want to send over to another page you can use get but if you see sending sensitive data like user id and password or credit card numbers you typically use post all right so where do you want to send the result to is done by the action attribute okay so let's quickly look at the form elements now okay so i've copy pasted this form file so let's open this up and let's do a review of what are the form fields available okay so everything you define should be defined under a form field all right and then there's something called as field set where you can group the fields okay if you want to see the output of this okay this output is called as form field set right you see the line here is basically grouping of the fields okay and you want to define let's do a comparison with your code and the output you want to define a legend right for the field set you will get a legend where you can add some text over here okay and then you have the 
label and for which label you want to have this an input and input type is text you will see the text box if you say type as email you will see for the email you can say password you can say number so this only accept numbers you cannot enter anything you can just add numbers to it then you have telephone type telephone same input type telephone then type url and type search okay so you have different formats of text box that you can create okay you can create options using the select select basically have option groups you can create groups in it option group one and option group two and inside each option group you can create the options and whatever label that you give will be visible in the option next one is basically the radio button so if you want to create a radio buttons you can use the input type and type as radio okay so when you say type as radio it becomes the radio button and only thing that you have to remember in radio button is basically the name you have to give the same name then that becomes into one group okay and how do you add the check boxes again the type is check box so once you say input and type is check boxes the check boxes will appear and then you have text area element if you want to write a long text like this you know type text in a number of rows then basically you can use text area for it okay text area you can mention how many rows and how many columns the columns are the width the rows is the height okay then you have the submit button and here you have a student information form so let's quickly review that for name you can use type as text and input again for age you can say input as number and you can accept the email telephone number then you have is select that's basically the options and you can add the primary and secondary as your option groups and then you can have options inside the option groups then you can have the radio buttons then you can have the check boxes okay and then you have your comments which is multi-line that is text area and then you have your send and clear button clear button is when you type something you want to clear it's automatically clear right okay so that's are the elements of a form you can have a look at the code here i have written all the elements here so you can have a look and then you can create your own form try to create a contact form that's your next exercise and try to use some of the elements here and create your own form as well okay you can create a survey form you can create you know maybe uh, employee form whatever form that you think maybe a sign up form login form but try to use these elements and try to embed them inside a form try to create a field set legend and put a label and different types of inputs that is available for you and also you have learned how to do get and post so try to see whether you can add some attributes to the form like action and methods and try to navigate from this page to the results page all right so that's all about form elements and I'll see you in the next one. Hello and welcome to the lecture on exercise section. So let's build one web page. Okay. And we will gonna create this web page from a website. Okay. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit over to half post. Okay. This is a famous site for the news. Right. We will pick one of the article from this site. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the same HTML page using the tags that we have learned. We haven't learned everything about HTML. We haven't even learned about CSS. So whatever we have learned so far, we'll try to match that output with the output that half post have. Okay. So we'll head over to food and drink, style and beauty. We will go to food and drink. And we can pick any of the articles here. Okay. Let's pick the ingredient one. Okay. So let's make this page. Okay. So you can see the page has an heading. This could be a subheading, then some text here. Then there's an image here. We haven't learned how to embed the image, so we'll not embed the image. Obviously, there is some text and there is an hyperlink. And also, okay, so we have ingredients, so we have an ordered list and we have ordered list. Right. So this is a perfect example for us. We have an ordered list, ordered list and we have some bolds here and then we have some headings also over here right so this could be a good example for you to learn how to create a web page 
but you will we will not able to create exactly like this because we haven't learned about css so what we're going to do is we're going to remove styling from this page so that we can see only the html tags how you're going to do that right click on it say inspect then go find the style sheet for this what is a style sheet style sheet is nothing but applying the colors increasing the font increasing the spacing between the tags and all those things so all the style sheet will be found under head section and we're going to find the styles okay there's a style here so this style we will learn in the next section so if i delete this let's try to delete and see what happens okay so the styling has been removed from this page so now we are left over with the plain old html okay so if you go and browse the page yeah so we are able to see the page now okay and this page is plain old html right there is no styling attached to it it's just simple plain and simple text that has been shown here right and this is html text right it has the bolds and it has the headers then it has this italics then it has the unordered list and the ordered list so we'll try to use these things and we will try to create the same page as it is available here all right so let's go ahead and create this page so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put it over to, to the here so that i can copy paste the text okay this is the heading and this is the subheading we can actually do open this another page so they can we can see what is the heading and the subheading looks like okay so we'll go ahead and create a folder called newspaper okay and then i'm going to create a file called newspaper.txt dot html okay let's open this up in the brackets open up our boilerplate copy this then we paste it here okay and then we will call it as half post okay so let's start creating this page okay how i want to see the output i want to see an output something similar to what we are seeing in the html okay but in a nicer way of course we want to have some text some links and then we want to have some ingredient directions and all those things okay so observe how i'm trying to match this text inside the tags okay so let's understand how we're going to do that so first thing we have to do is we have to copy this heading and then we'll place it in the h1 tag okay before that in the h1 i want to say this is half post and under the foods and drink section okay and we'll copy this url and we'll place it as a comment so you know how to write a comment okay so we have our heading let's write a line okay and we can even see the output as i'm writing okay so we have our heading we can remove half post and we can say foods and drink section then we have our horizontal line then we can have an h2 which we can copy and paste it here okay so we have our h1 tag and h2 tag okay then i want to have an h3 tag as well and then we're going to add this text and you see it's italics here right so we're going to put i here right so we have the italics we have the heading 3 heading 2 and heading 3 then we want to add this by kelly page and you see there's some space here so we can add that space with the br right and then we can add the paragraph okay the name of the author is in strong so 
so we can add this strong here and you can observe that it's become the bold now all right so once you have that so let's add the text that's the content for us okay and here we want to have the heirloom tomatoes as the hyperlink so we say href hash as of now point to nothing all right so let's look at it okay so we have our text here okay we can remove this br right and we can put it here okay looks better now right then on bottom of it let's start to write the article right this article starts from here right this is basically the heading then there's a subheading then they have this sub subheading maybe in the bold and then they have the unordered list so let's try to create this okay so for this i'm going to use section okay inside the section we have article okay and in the article i'm going to say heading first i'm going to have header then i'm going to have paragraphs then i'm going to have footer right so this will be my one article so that's how my article is going to look like and i'm going to remove the heading and paragraph okay so let's add the footer link footer link what we can do is we can write an href and we can include this link to this article right and we can say target is blank and we can say read more okay and how it's going to look like it's going to look something like this so you'll have a read more when you click it will go to the new page so we have deal with the footer now let's deal with the header now so header we can add this as an h1 tag for that article right so we should have our heading now right and then we will add the ordered and unordered and ordered list so for that next we have a subheading for that that's nothing but this one so we can make it italics all right so it's look like this then we will add our unordered list so we will li so we add three points let me go it here we just copy paste things here okay all right so we have that then next is we can add ingredients that's the, basically this one so what we can do we can add a paragraph and we can add strong to it right so you here your ingredient and then your unordered list okay similarly we can copy paste this and then we can go and say directions right all right so we have our directions then we just copy paste the directions and we are almost close to completing the page okay so let's add the second direction that's a lengthy page so we'll delete this item right all right so i believe the page is ready by now we just do a refresh okay so if you look at the page that we have it here it looks exactly the same right just forget about the colors here because that will come up from css just look at how you are able to structure your html page right 
you are able to structure the headings you are able to italics the font you are able to add some spacing create a paragraph then add the ordered an ordered list then the ordered list okay and it's basically look exactly the same that we have it here without the css okay we haven't learned how to embed image we can actually download this image and just embed right over here okay that will be learning in the next section how to embed things like video image audio and everything so as of now you can take any of the article and try to see whether you are able to create the same page or not okay the only thing that you know is the tags you know what are heading tags paragraph tags how to create links how to navigate to another page how to italics how to add strong bullet points so look in all those things and try to look at any of the page and then convert that page into uh, your own html page and see whether you can match the output or not all right so if you if i'm gonna head over to the page where there is no css you see it's exactly the same that we have created okay well that's the exercise on the newspaper you can take any newspaper or any article from the web go to yahoo news or google news or you can go to any of the famous news sites that you go take an article remove their style sheet how to remove the style sheet you have to go to inspect mode try to go to head section let me open this up okay try to go to the head section and then you will find something called a style okay this is script and style so whatever style that you see you can go ahead and delete it okay, delete element and see whether it's removed or not if it's not removed you keep on deleting all the styles that they have okay he has one style so i'll delete this okay so this break up the style so remove the style leave it only with the html code now you have the html so try to match the html because that is what you have learned so far all right so do this exercise and have some fun with html okay so that's the exercise on newspaper i'll see you in the next one